Today, we're going to be talking about a severe, potentially life-threatening allergic reaction mediated by the host immune system, and it can be triggered by a commonly used medication in people who are predisposed. In many cases, like the one involving this 40-year-old pediatrician, a dangerous allergic reaction can take everyone by surprise. Lynette had been on call at the hospital for three nights during the week before her children's winter school break. The family had planned a vacation to Hawaii, which they needed to cancel when Lynette started complaining of fever, chills, and fatigue shortly after her last day at work. She had also been coughing, and her cough produced a yellowish, purulent sputum. When she tried going for a walk with her husband to get some fresh air, the exertion of walking up a small hill left her feeling short of breath, and she complained of terrible chest pain on her right side. Her husband was worried and decided to bring her to the local ER, realizing that she may be suffering from a more serious infection. At the hospital, Lynette was diagnosed with right middle lobe pneumonia, and the attending physician decided to start her on a combination of amoxicillin, a member of the penicillin family of antibiotics, as well as clavulinic acid and a macrolide in case Lynette was suffering from a healthcare-associated pneumonia. Lynette's colleague, an ER physician at the hospital, asked her if she had any known allergies to medications like penicillin. She assured him that she didn't. In fact, she remembered being treated with penicillin once in her early 30s for a dental abscess, and there had been no adverse reaction. She was otherwise very healthy and remembers the dental infection as being the only time she had ever needed treatment with an antibiotic. Minutes after the first IV infusion of amoxicillin, Lynette knew something was wrong. Her face, neck, and ears began to feel itchy, and her tongue began to tingle. Recognizing the early signs of an allergic reaction, likely to the drug she had just been given, she used her call button to summon her care team to the bedside. When the attending physician arrived minutes later, he noticed hives on Lynette's neck, face, and arms. Her lips were beginning to swell, and she was obviously struggling to breathe. Her vitals were also abnormal, with a rapid heart rate and a dangerously low systolic blood pressure of 60 over 120. The physician's own heart rate went up as he immediately recognized the signs of anaphylaxis in his patient and colleague. Anaphylaxis is the result of a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction involving IgE antibodies and mediated by the immune system. Individuals like Lynette, who are predisposed to this kind of reaction, show signs of an allergic response on re-exposure to a specific antigen. Lynette became sensitized to penicillin after her first exposure to the drug many years before her allergic reaction, even though she experienced no adverse effects at the time. Penicillin is one of the most common causes of drug sensitization. This is because the penicillin molecule is chemically reactive. It can form covalent bonds with the body's own proteins. Penicillin acts as a haptin. It doesn't stimulate an immune response by itself, but when it's bound to a host protein, it forms a new antigenic epitope that the body sees as foreign. Penicillin-modified proteins can cross-link B-cell receptors, stimulating the activation of penicillin-specific B-cells. At the same time, these proteins are engulfed and processed by antigen-presenting cells, which then present antigen fragments to T helper cells. The activated penicillin-specific T cells can then produce the cytokine interleukin-4, which stimulates the B cells to produce IgE antibodies. People like Lynette, who are susceptible to type 1 hypersensitivity reactions, may be predisposed to producing more IL-4 and more IgE antibodies than those who aren't predisposed to this kind of allergic reaction. Once activated, the penicillin-specific B cells in Lynette's body multiplied further and differentiated into plasma cells, specialized B cells capable of producing large amounts of antibody, and memory cells, a third type of B cell capable of remembering and recognizing the same antigen in the future. The anti-penicillin IgE antibodies in Lynette's bloodstream then attached via their constant regions to the receptors on circulating mast cells. 
Mast cells are specialized white blood cells containing many granules with mediators like histamine that can cause inflammation if the vesicles degranulate and release their contents. When Lynette was exposed to penicillin for the second time in her life, the penicillin, which was again bound to host proteins, was able to bind to IgEs on the surface of the mast cells, causing degranulation and release of histamine and other inflammatory mediators. The inflammatory mediators led to capillary dilation, explaining Lynette's low blood pressure and tachycardia, as well as airway constriction and mucus secretion, making it very hard for her to breathe. The two main actions of inflammatory mediators like histamine are vasodilation and constriction of airway smooth muscle cells. If left untreated, these responses can result in vasomotor collapse and acute respiratory failure and ultimately death. For intravenous exposures, like Lynette's, symptoms typically begin within 5 to 30 minutes and progress rapidly. Luckily, Lynette was in the right place at the right time. She immediately received epinephrine and fluid resuscitation to increase her blood pressure and relieve her dyspnea. The epinephrine counteracted the effects of the histamine by relaxing the smooth muscles in her airways and constricting her blood vessels, and the extra fluid increased her circulating blood volume. She was also given a corticosteroid and an antihistamine to reduce the inflammation triggered by the allergic reaction. She recovered quickly and was switched onto a non-penicillin antibiotic to continue treating her pneumonia. In this case, the rapid response of the medical team saved Lynette's life. Type 1 hypersensitivity reactions aren't the only kind of allergic response to penicillin, but they're certainly the most serious. This is why many people who are predisposed to anaphylactic reactions carry an epinephrine auto-injector, a rapid subcutaneous or intramuscular injection device designed to quickly deliver epinephrine to a person suffering from anaphylaxis and allowing them enough time to get follow-up medical attention. Especially for children predisposed to anaphylaxis from insect stings or certain food allergens like peanuts, it's important for teachers and caregivers to be well trained in how to quickly recognize the symptoms of an allergic reaction and effectively administer short-term life-saving treatment.